Well, hey there, everybody. Uh, today we're working on part two of uh, getting a uh, neon processing plant set up. Uh, and right now uh, I'm about to drop the, uh, well, hopefully not drop, but lower the <laughs> uh, bombarder onto the processing bench I built last time. Uh, if you want to see the uh, the build of the bench, the link in the description below or uh, the, click the card up in the corner uh, and check that out. Uh, otherwise, we'll uh, get to it. We'll lower the bombarder and start doing some wiring. Uh, I decided to do this part first because this thing is massive. It is so heavy. Uh, I don't know. It's it's something like 200 pounds, which is what like a, a, uh, something like 82 kilos or 81 kilos, something like that. But um, yeah, uh, that's why I'm using this crane and the lifting strap. So, but uh, we'll get it lowered on and then we'll get started. I believe this is where, I mean, this is the general area where I might need it. I, I may have to shift the position around a little bit based on where I want the leads coming out and the um, primary voltage coming in. Um, but this is an oldie, an old Sola. This is a vintage transformer copy. It's a 12.5 uh, uh, KVA. Uh, you can see there it runs a, a 110 or 220. Uh, 20,000 volt bombarder. Um, this uh, serial number there, uh, what, 5533? Um, I'm not sure if that, uh, a lot of times the transformers are dated with a year, so that may be the um, 55th one of these they made in 1933. Uh, so that might give you an idea of how old this thing is. But uh, yeah, the, tra the bombarder is the heart of a neon plant and uh, it provides the high voltage to uh, process the tubes once they're drawn down under a vacuum. So uh, this is a, a crucial part of the uh, processing setup. And uh, also we got the choke, which controls the bombarder. Uh, it controls the voltage, uh, the input primary voltage that goes into the bombarder and then based on how much voltage is coming in, uh, it regulates the output. So, but uh, yeah, we'll get started with, uh, with getting this all wired up. All right, I got a collection of uh, some of the items I'll be needing to assemble this, but I wanted to show you the schematic I drew uh, of what I uh, got going on. I have two circuits here. One is the um, uh, 120 that uh, powers the vacuum pump and I have a, the vacuum gauge and then I have a, an, an external outlet here for like a spark coil or anything else I want to power. So that'll be independent of the uh, 240 coming in, uh, which will just be dedicated to the uh, bombarder circuit. I got uh, the uh, safety switch here, main power. Uh, that turns on a yellow bulb. Uh, I have a little key switch that interrupts the power to the contactor transformer when this key switch is on it will illuminate the orange bulb uh, and that powers the little transformer in the contactor box there and uh, and then the, the final switch the that turns on the bombarder bombarder uh, provides power from the transformer to the contactor It'll illuminate a red bulb, and then the uh, the transformer will uh, be live. So um, it's kind of a what I got going on there. The this is a, a modified version of uh, the schematic on Robert House's uh, blog, Novial Journeys. Uh, his um, bombarding control entry. Uh, I'll post a link in the description below so you can take a look at that if you're watching this. Uh, interested in the how all this works uh, it's a very informative uh, web blog so um, oh I want to show you this too I got this uh, for uh, starting up my uh, vacuum pump uh, so that'll be uh, 
connect to the um, the 120 circuit there. I got to fire up the vacuum pump. Uh, zoom. Uh, and uh, I'll have another outlet down there in case I want to add a diffusion pump later on. I don't have one at the moment, but uh, leave that option open. So um, yeah, we'll get started wiring here. All right, and uh, here you can see I opened up the bombarder. Uh, reason it being is I there was one of the cer ceramic insulators that had cracked, and the retaining ring had fallen off. Uh, I wanted to uh, epoxy it back together so that that uh, wire wouldn't chafe through on the uh, metal there because that's kind of the whole purpose of having the insulator. Uh, this is where the, well, it's either, uh, this particular transformer can either be a wire from 110 or 220, depending on if these uh, are hooked up in, uh, these wires are hooked up in parallel or series. Um, but just in case you guys wanted to see what the guts of a giant old transformer look like, this is all, Iron, steel. Those are the secondary windings. Big hunk of metal wrapped with copper wire. So that's, that's why it's so heavy. Cool, anyway, I'll get that uh, insulator glued back together and I can put it back in. All right, so this is the uh, ceramic insulator that came out of the uh, Bombarder uh, primary uh, side. Um, it's uh, all there, just it's just broken. It's kind of cool though. Uh, you read it, it has a patent date on it of, let's say 9-11 of 06, when in this case this would be uh, 1906 so it's pretty old but uh, yeah I'm just gonna mix up uh, a bit of um, epoxy and uh, glue it back together I cleaned this insulator already really well, so it was very dirty. Probably because it would, you know, it's never been cleaned in the maybe maybe almost 90 years it's been around. So yeah, got it all cleaned off, and so these surfaces should hold pretty well. I can always scrape off excess later, I suppose. Rather have a little too much than not enough. All right. There it is back together, and I'll just. Clamp it. Clamps. There we go, just to hold it together. And then uh, any of that excess, I'll just uh, scrape off uh, with an uh, X-Acto blade. All right, and there's the uh, insulator installed, reinstalled back in the uh, and the junction box there. It's shiny. Right on. Alright, now I'm wiring the uh, um, 
vacuum pump circuit. This outlet down here is going to be switched so it's not actually uh, hooked up into a hot yet. So I got the uh, I had an extension cord because this table is on wheels, it can be mobile. I can move it to wherever I need to if necessary and then uh, uh, this outlet up here currently is the only one with uh, hot wire. So let's I got a little outlet tester in there. I'm going to plug this in and uh, we'll see if that lights up. Do a little continuity test or whatever there. All right. Uh, if if it's a cor correctly wired, these two uh, orange uh, lights on the right will light up. So ready? Three, two, one. Wow, I can wire one outlet. Good job. <laughs> All right, I decided to take the choke off and uh, flip it 180 because I wanted that junction box at the back uh, and there's a hole for the slide on either end of the choke. So should work the same either way. But uh, I didn't want to get the crane out or lift the bombarder off and tip the, the uh, bench over like I did to get it on first. So I'm just going to have to uh, kind of bear hug it up to up there. So I decided to, you get a watch. So <laughs> here we go. I got all the nuts here on my wrist. Super. I just gotta get them on. Come on. So There's one. Come on. Okay. All right, this is enough fun. For you. Got three of them holding on. So. All right. So, so the um, choke is facing the other way. I made a little shelf for the pre-wire contactor unit. Uh, I haven't decided where exactly I want to hang it, which is why the uh, we have some excess wood on top. So uh, when I decide where exactly it's going to be, I'll um, trim that down. Uh, I have the 120 uh, pump and auxiliary uh, accessory circuit. I believe uh, all wired up, so I think that is complete. I got it plugged in right now. So, testing the outlets again. These the two orange on the right should light up, and when uh, so these should be live always. <coughs> yeah, okay. As well as these should be live. Oh, always on. Check. And you may notice down here I have a neon unit with a little Tech 22 um, tiny transformer plugged in there. So that outlet is uh, switched. I got my manual motor starter. And that's going to be what, uh, the vacuum pump's going to be on that. So um, when I flip this, that should turn the. Uh, that outlet on. So, ready? Three, two, I'll get both, both things in there, huh? Three, two, one. Yeah! Look at that. Good deal. That's working. Switched, and I suppose I can test the outlet while I'm at it. Make sure it's all wired correctly. All right, and there it is. 
cool. So soon the vacuum pump will be on there. And uh, but anyway, it's uh, <laughs> it's after midnight. I'm gonna call it a night for now and get some dinner. I'm kind of hungry. Anyway, I'll be back uh, tomorrow to work on uh, more. All right, so uh, I finally decided the uh, placement of the shelf, and uh, I got about this much uh, extra wood I need to cut off, so we shall employ the reciprocating saw, and uh, uh, might be a little interesting because this thing is kind of a beast and there's not much room in here, so we'll see how it goes. Okay, so uh, I got this uh, switch wired up, and uh, ran wires to these uh, junction boxes here. Uh, these are for the, the lights, yellow, orange, and red, for various stages of uh, power activation, and getting the... Uh, all the wires uh, hooked up in the box to the various locations where they need to be. So uh, that's uh, after this, we'll uh, do the 240 for the uh, bombarder. All right, uh, so I thought I'd do a little update here. Uh, I got most of the uh, wiring done in this box, and I've started on uh, going for the 220 or 240. Um, got the uh, safety switch here hooked up uh, with a Dan range plug and uh, starting to get the wiring fed to this box. These will go to the contactor and then the contactor will go out to the choke. So let's move it along. All right, so I think I got everything uh, wired up through the contactor. Uh, I do not have the choke or the bombarder hooked up yet. Um, and I was going to do a functionality test. You see I have my little three light bulbs jerry-rigged up. You have to use your imagination for uh, yellow, orange, and red. Uh, but I think uh, we're ready to hook up power. I got my little extension cord because the outlet's not here. And uh, see what happens here. All right, I'm gonna turn the main power on. It should turn on this light. Nothing's on fire yet. Uh, turning this switch should turn on that uh, orange light, middle one, yes, and hitting this button should light up the third one, and you'll hear, you should hear the contactor clang. Nice. So with this off, the contactor should not work. That's interesting. I think it's the way that uh, transformer in there is wired. I'll have to look at that.
Okay, I gotta ponder about that. Probably do a little more working, but all in all, uh, a successful test. All right, so what I think what the problem was, uh, this switch was originally only interrupting one side, uh, one of the primary sides of the little transformer in the contactor box. Uh, and I think it was like back feeding voltage, uh, lighting up that second bulb. Uh, what I ended up doing, this is the switch had, has luckily has two uh, sides. So I just interrupted both of the primary sides of the uh, transformer and with this switch. So hopefully that should solve the problem. All right, main power, secondary switch, and then contactor. Nice. What this? All right. Cool, problem solved. All right, uh, well, I think I have all the wiring in place. And got the choke wired up and the bombarder wired up. a Jacob's ladder on the bombarder. Those uh, copper leads are about six millimeters apart. Oops. And uh, I'm gonna do the very first test of the bombarder. First test ever. I have, I don't even know if this thing works but we're gonna find out right now. I'm gonna put you on the tripod and take a look. All right, got the power plugged in and we got our three stages. Let's see if I wired this correctly. Uh, yeah, here we go. All right, main power on. Secondary key switch on. Here we go, bombarder. It works. The choke is in full, uh, all the way in. Let's try it again. Three, two, one. Don't try this at home, kids. Wow, that's, that's powerful. That's with the choke in full. So, um, okay. Uh, it works. It works. <laughs> wow. I'm kind of at a lack for words here. Awesome. Okay, now I'm doing a little experiment. I got the uh, slide at the choke pulled out oh, a little bit. Uh, and I'm going to fire up the bombarder. The current running through the, the coils of the choke might actually pull the slide in. I'm not sure, but we're going to find out right now. Ready? Three, two, one. I saw it move a little bit. Did you, did you see it? Pulled it in. A little bit. 
thing I like about this key switch is you cannot remove the key when it's on. You have to turn it off to remove the key, so. Off, securely off. All right, uh, so I'm gonna go uh, with a bit of a mad scientist theme on the uh, indicator bulbs. Uh, I got this uh, cast or a threaded steel pipe here. Uh, unfortunately, they come with the sockets that fit in the in the uh, pipe fittings there uh, come with short wires, and I'm not going to do a splice inside. So I need longer wires to attach, which means I have to desolder the old ones. This is how they uh, they're just press fit into these rubber housings, and uh, wires are soldered on the back. So I got uh, did the first one. Got two more to do, and then uh, they'll be ready to indicate our stages of activation. All right, and there they are, all finished and ready to go. Okay, so the next step is uh, need to get the high voltage primer, uh, secondary leads from the bombarder uh, to the bench top. Uh, some neon plant setups have like a, a, tro a trolley wire system with the leads hanging down, uh, but I decided just to go with a um, high voltage uh, tower kind of uh, deal. I'm gonna run the bombarder leads behind it and then uh, come out with some feed through uh, insulators up at the top. So uh, I gotta drill, uh, drill some holes for those to uh, come on through. installed. The uh, lead from the bombarder will come up to the back here and then uh, on the front here uh, will be the uh, lead that goes down to the table. I chose these insulators uh, because they have this unique uh, feature of being able to clamp onto a rod uh, and also their feed through, which is nice. Uh, but this clamping feature uh, will be used to employ the Jacob's ladder as a safety device. Uh, because if the circuit's broken, like say if the tube shatters while processing, uh, the Jacob's ladder can act as a uh, next path of least resistance. Uh, it's kind of like a safety device. So, but uh, yeah, these were listed as. Uh, ham radio antenna insulators. I have no idea if that's actually what they are, but uh, they seemed like they would work pretty well for my application. So, very cool. All right, there are the uh, feed-through insulators installed uh, with the uh, copper rods as a Jacob's ladder. I haven't trimmed them off yet because I'm not sure exactly what uh, distance I'm going to need. Because uh, I want, don't you know, I don't want it only to arc right there. I actually want it to go through the wires instead uh, and only go through the Jacob's ladder if the wires aren't connected to anything. So, all right, the video's getting long, but we're close to the end here. I got the secondary uh, wires fed through the back up to the insulators and the Jacob's ladder. Uh, and then, of course, I'll drop down the leads onto the, the table. Once we get the tabletop on there, uh, I believe uh, the bottom is all finished. I, I think for everything I need to do. So I'll what I'll do is cut off a corner there, cut out a hole for the outlet, and my little work table over there will become the bench top. Served me faithfully for the past few weeks while I've uh, during the build, but now it's time to employ it for its actual purpose. All right, well, uh, I think I'm done. I uh, got the uh, tabletop on and then the uh, three light towers. And uh, we'll test it. Main power on. Let's 
secondary safety switch on dead man switch it works all right very cool um Okay, well, I guess that's it for uh, part two here. Um, stay tuned for part three, which will be uh, getting the vacuum uh, equipment set up. So vacuum system. Subscribe for more neon related videos. And hey, uh, leave a comment below. Tell me what you think, uh, if you like the design or uh, think I could improve it in some way. I'd love to hear. All right, thanks. We'll see you next time.